action. We, we got to this place right now because of lots of government initiatives, a lot of programs that were saying, hey, girl, you a boss. Hey, girl, you a queen. And they created a whole lot of programs that got women into uh, industries that they had not previously been in. And so with all of that media rhetoric, it really built up their identity. And while they're building up women's identity, there was no uh, social interaction with young men. And so there was a chasm. So as women are being lifted, boys are just dropping and dropping and dropping. And so like, I know that like I should have some type of self-determination and some type of ambition. But when you've been beaten on by the media for, for the last 25 years, it's really hard to have an identity. And no one gives a shit. They say, hey, lazy ass men, just do something. Well, we got to take back the identity. You know what I'm saying? Being masculine, just doing masculine shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, Man, But see, that, that sounds... That sounds so easy, but you have to have a community of men that so you can uh, like go play football. You have to know like 11 people to go play uh, just to throw the football around. Right. You have to have that. Uh, also, according to that same study, they said within with that within that same group of men, uh, probably like one in 10 of them have more than two friends that they can call to talk to. And so these men are also living in isolation with no actual communication to to say Hey, my life is hard right now, and I have no idea how to get out of this situation. Well, a lot of the communities are broken, and this ain't this ain't no this ain't no race thing. This ain't just black men. This ain't just white men. This is the American young man right now who's having an identity crisis and saying, "Where do I fit into this society? Women are so powerful, and I ain't got no job. I ain't got no career. Where do I fit into this thing?" Man, this society is going down rapidly. It is. You know what I mean? And and honestly, it's not it, personally, it's not gonna it's not gonna get better. It's not gonna get better because yes, we are throwing out ideas for a man to think, but James, on a mass I'm sorry, on a mass scale, it is it's doing the opposite. James Allen wrote this wonderful book called As a Man Thinketh. And his it's not even a long book, it's probably like less than forty pages. But the whole point is, is it's going off the biblical context as a man thinketh. Whatever you believe inside your mind, so it shall be. Whatever you believe yourself to be, that you are. And so if you say the words that it's going to be a complete, total chaos and destruction, then so it may be. But me, on the other hand, I look back in 1995 and uh, Farrakhan and other leaders in the community, they said that they had the Million Man March. 27 years ago, there was a journey to understand the black male identity in America. And so 27 years later, I'm looking and I'm assessing uh, our identity. I'm seeing that we've been so demoralized. We had all the rhetoric, but with no financial resources to support and bolster these men to put them in position to have families and to help uh, grow the American economy. We've, we've, we're lost. Well, if you ask me, this 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 chunk of land. You said they was going off the biblical text, huh? Yeah, I mean, as a man thinketh, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And there's a lot of prophecies that say this chunk of land is not going to prosper. It's time for it to go down. Now, I understand that we want to save the, the this American this American thing, but these are people, man. These are human beings. Like, yes. You can you can go historically, and you can say that the Bible said this group of people. Right now, when I see a human person, man, I see a person that I have compassion for, that I have love and concern for. Of course. And so I want to make sure that this place called America can go on and exist for as long as possible. Oh, man. Well, that's like saying you don't want the kingdom to come. Because America is not the kingdom that's prophesied to come. So, to, me personally, to, to I be fair, I don't subscribe to any religious ideology. Like I've read the Bible, I've been introduced to the Quran. I've, I've had some Jewish friends who have who've introduced me to some Judeo uh, Jewish ideology, and it's all interesting. It's all fascinating. And with all those people, with all of their ideologies, I know that I met wonderful people that I appreciated. This, oh, of course, it's, it's nice people. Yeah, there. I mean, I'm like, Definitely. hey, and they tell and they tell their stories with so much conviction. You know, it's like, dang, like. If I believed what you believe as much as you believe it, like I'd be excited too. But I don't. I don't have that conviction. The thing is, me personally, I, I want our people to be on top, and and it's not going to happen here. It's not going to happen here. The whole my, my structure... people are all the people who live in the geographical location in which I exist in. Well, uh, like, well, okay. I mean, in order to, in order, like, in order to do the thing that you're saying, right? 
you have to go and mend some in some historic, some ancient uh, relationships. And that seems to be, bro, if not impossible, it's impossible. Why? Nothing is impossible. I, you know what? Nothing is impossible. But to leave this nation and then go over to another nation and try to claim that nation based on historical lineage, mm -hmm. that is that that requires war. Of course. I mean, how how how, how did how did everything get? get <laughs> it's war. How did, how did how did you know what I'm saying? How did this place get war? Rome war. I don't think that uh, <laughs> the idea of going to war for a place that's not the place in which I exist that that seems like a task that no no person should take on. Well, they 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 doing it. Who? America, America, and all these what? other countries. They're doing what? They they they're going. They friend go to war. If not, we are already in war. You ever heard that? We are already in World War Three. We fought lots of wars. I'm saying America has fought lots of wars. I'm an American. I'm a veteran of the uh you know Afghanistan Iraqi uh, conflicts. Like I'm. I, I understand. You have to defend the place in which you're at. Well, I mean, not really. You what do you mean not really? Not really. I mean, personally, I wouldn't defend this place. I, I wouldn't. Oh, that's a very interesting statement to say that I wouldn't protect the place that I live at. I mean, if someone came to my house, of course, my well being. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, but, that's cool. But on a mass scale, on a mass scale, <laughs> I mean, on a mass scale, no. Because you're going to have people I, I, I that's going to do it. And I respect your opinion so much, but that's, it sounds so crazy because war in America is a class issue. And when I was there, it's poor white people, it's poor Mexican people, it's poor black people who go over and surrender their bodies to make sure that everyone in America can continue to do what they're doing. Hey man, being on being on their phones and enjoying the luxuries of freedom. I feel you. But men are dying for freedom. Right. If you ask me, I, everybody should go back to wherever they came. Right. <laughs> seriously, seriously. Wouldn't you think that that would solve a lot of stuff? If you can articulate a way to make that possible, I would I would listen to it and entertain it. Yeah, because it's no way possible because it's a lot of people on Earth. Everyone, everyone <laughs> who's here, their mm -hmm. ancestors came here because where they came from, they ain't like it that much. Everybody who's in this place called America, they're here because the place they came from, they ain't like it that much. Right. And anybody who's here right now, if you don't like this place. Please take your ass back to where your ancestors came from and then send me a postcard and tell me if you like it over there. Well, I mean, everything is all fucked up now, so hey. So like I can't I can't I can't time travel. I can't go back to the time when my people was kings and queens. I can't do it. I can only exist right now in the most powerful nation that's ever existed in the history of the world, the United States of America. You are the greatest American alive, <laughs> mother the one of the, the greatest citizens to ever exist. And I say that because I'm doubling down. We have to be thankful. We have to appreciate what we have. And not only do we have to be appreciate what we have, we have to be good stewards to what we have. Now, I'm not saying that um, living on a day by day basis. Yes, we do have to survive as human beings. You know what I mean? And if money mm -hmm. rhetoric matters, bro, I'm not here to survive. I'm here to thrive. I'm in the most richest place that's ever existed. You I, I want. I want everyone who's here with me, bro. This is a class war. This is a class war. One of my, my most favorite people in the history, Fred Hampton, understood that we need we need the white KKK boys who are making less than forty thousand dollars a year to once they leave their welding job to come over here and have a conversation about how we advance the male position in America. Mm. The, the, there is a war against masculinity. And on top of that, there is a class war. So you're doubling down on poor men. They got that. They just they squeezing the life out of poor men in America. And we have to have that conversation because that's the here and the right now. Who's squeezing the life? Who is these people that squeezing the life? Legislation, With Congress, people, politicians, rhetoric, uh, institutions on both sides. Yes. So, I mean, damn, it's on both sides. So what can we Troy, do about you it? You never heard happy wife, happy life? Yeah, I say, uh, I like to say um, happy man, happy land. I mean, that, that sounds cool. <laughs> but like we have men, men, men are submissive to their women in this society right now. Well, yeah. When, when a woman says, uh, I, I want to do this. Yes, dear. It's a whole lot of that, bro. I'm just like, this is this is a reality that men are facing right now. And I'm attacking that thing. Right. I mean, because it's, it's probably... A, 
a lot of men is afraid to be on their own. It's not. I don't even think that it's fear through legislation of physicality has been completely removed from any equation. And so what used to be a privilege and a courtesy, what well, what's called chivalry, you look at me and you know that I have strength. And so you ask me, can you open this pickle jar? Because you know that my grip strength is stronger than your grip strength. And now you say we're equal and I'm, but now we're equal, but you're still going to tell me to open the jar because you still ain't got the grip strength to open the jar. So you expect me to do it without any appreciation for the fact that I'm doing it. So, don't open the fucking pickle jar. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What I, what I'm saying is like the messaging <laughs> and the branding has right. to be what it is. Like this is a courtesy. Me rendering my physical strength to a nation is a courtesy. Me rendering my physical strength to a counterpart is a courtesy. When I fall in love with the woman, I'm saying that I'm willing to fight for and die, surrender my entire being. To make sure that you and my offspring are able to continue. This is the contract that I have not only with my woman, but with my community and my nation. This is masculinity, man. It's about making babies and protecting your babies. And that's it. I agree with protecting your nation of people. <laughs> you keep like you. I, I hear I hear exactly what you're saying. If you if, if tomorrow you want to move to a different place and you send me a postcard, I completely understand. But for as long as you, you mean you're an entrepreneur in America doing business in America, you just got your business license in America. Yes, bro. That's exciting. Yeah, of course it is. Yes. I'm pretty sure I can do that anywhere as long as I put my mind <laughs> to it. You know what I mean? No, I, that's that's absolutely positively false. It's not right because other places they don't they don't have this the spirit of entrepreneurship where you just can't. They have a they also have a class system. They have a class system when you're born to uh, in a peasant class. You just don't just say I'm going to go up and just go to school. No, no, there are man. This is the one of the freest nations on the planet. Now speaking about that, yes, yes, you are right. Now the thing is, somebody on them other countries or whatever they built that shit. You 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 have you don't you don't know the language, you don't know the culture. Like to go the, everything that you're saying, you have you have been brought up in this place to do business in this place. You have thirty you have thirty plus years of experience in this place. Of course, right. You don't have thirty plus years in any other place to go and do business nowhere else. Well, I believe in the in the field that I am in. <laughs> I can dig it. You know what I'm saying? I can dig like. It. In the field that I'm in, right? Or, or landscaping is everywhere. Just, just to get a start, uh, vehicles is everywhere. Just to get a start, I have to ask you a very direct question. Go ahead. How come you don't accept the responsibility to take care of the place you were born at? You're born here. You receive all the benefits from being born here: the education, the right. opportunity to do business. Why don't you feel any sense of duty to protect and and sustain this place? Because it, it, my whole thing is, is it should be a lot of me going around. You know no, what no, mean? I just as, I want I want to know why specifically though. You why do you have an allegiance to something other than the place in which you were born, the place they gave you the opportunity to exist? Why do you have any allegiance to anything other than? Because America? it's the history. It's the history for me. The history say the history is you live in the richest place that ever exists. And if you live somewhere else, you would not have these opportunities. So why not be thankful? I am thankful every every day. I'm, I'm of but course, I'm thankful every. I'm saying, but you're yeah. talking about you talking about total destruction and going to a different place. Because and me, what I personally believe, I'm listening, is what the scriptures say about Babylon the Great. You know what I mean? Which is I that understand. is that your personal experience though? Is your personal experience with Babylon the Great? My is, personal is this place oppressing you? Yes. How is this place oppressing you? It's oppressing my people. I'm I mean, I'm devastated. Like, because this it, conversation is a very difficult conversation. This it, is my it, friend, it, and I want to understand his position. It always is. And millions of people are they, they have the same exact ideology, and I'm like, yo, man, like, because like the tangible reality is the tangible reality. The facts are the facts. Why? Why? Are Any, we anything even... other than where I exist at and the and the job that's before me is theoretical. At best. Well, that's what me and you differ. I mean, you... And it's okay. I'm, I, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. I got to eat today. My kids got to eat today. Of like, course. 
I can't, I can't, I can't sit here and wait for Jesus to come back and say that he's going to make everything right when he gets here. I can't live like that. That's, I think that's irresponsible. Until, until he come back, we, we do what we have to do. You don't think that's irresponsible? I mean, honestly, you don't think that's irresponsible? What do you mean? To, the ideology of saying that I got to wait for Jesus, to wait for God to have a better life and instead of having some type of autonomy and saying that I can I can have self-determination, I can change the situation for myself. Well, at the beginning of the show, that's what I was saying. Yes, for us men out here, we have to, <laughs> we have to go and make some shit happen. We understand what we got to do as men. As men, we have to go and make money or no honey, like they always say, right? So... I can dig it. So... If it's a, it's a it's a mindset thing, we have to change. We have to change our mindset. That's why I I, I, I suggest little things as cleaning up your neighborhood. Um, um, doing stuff. Those things you know? matter. I completely agree yes. that those very specific things matter. But I cannot ignore that we have a government that has a thirty trillion dollar budget, and that money is going to be spent. They're going to spend the money somewhere. They're going to spend it. They're going to spend it in, a, in privileged communities. They're going to spend it overseas. And right now I'm saying that uh, when it came to the LGBTQ plus community, they were able to galvanize themselves. In the Houston, Texas, they had a march of 750,000 people and they made enough noise to say that we're going to come and get our money from this government in which I exist in. And for all the American men who exist right here in this place called United States of America, I'm saying that as a group of people, we should ask for the exact same check that other groups have gotten. So when are we going to do that shit? Right now. But I'm asking, I'm asking you, to give, I'm asking you to give a damn about the people who exist here. Like I, I, I do. I, 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 I have a, I have a belief in God. Like you know, I do. I have a relationship with God. I talk to God all the time, and that's why I get the courage to come and fight this fight. I God told that. me I made Moses, and I'm giving you a duty, and go do this duty. Right. America needs help, and so I've been sent on this task to come and talk to the American men and say. Farrah Khan had the 1 million man march and we shall have the 10 million man march because that's how big the plight for American men has gotten. It is tenfold. We have 10 million American men who do not have the resources to, to sustain themselves in this place. Man, 10 million can move something. 10 million can change the whole right? the whole landscape of America. But the but the, the, the thing is, the reality is not. And it's not. I mean, look. You, I can meet people directly where they're at right now. If you don't have the, uh, if you're on child support right now, when you get paid, your whole entire check goes to a person that you created a child with and you can't sustain yourself. That's a problem. If a woman can say she has bodily autonomy, then a man has bodily autonomy too. It has to be universal. And so I'm asking for equality when it comes to legislation based on sexual reproduction. I have to be able to sustain myself. I have to be able to sustain my children. You cannot tax me for having children. That's irresponsible as a nation. And they doing that though, right? They're doing it right now in right. every nation in America, hey, in hey, every state in America. Hey, and what I'm saying is we need to get the hell up out of here then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause, cause, cause it's not happening. What, what, what he's saying is not happening. They or, have or, the exact same laws in every other nation. They follow, they emulate hey, America. Well, we Guess are the what? big dog. Guess what? War. What some some mean? some motherfuckers got to be removed. So you gonna go to war with women? This is this is a, I'm talking no, about I'm sexual talking about, reproduction. I'm talking about a whole. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm talking about reproductive no. rights. In order to have but a nation, e even that too. You know what I'm saying? Like, so a whole bunch of shit gotta gotta happen. Politics is war without bloodshed, bro. Politics is the is the discussion of dispersing resources, and so. Everything that you say, you have to be able to pack back it up with some type of policy in what you're asking for. Oh, the scriptures is the policy. Oh, my goodness. Yes. That's the on. What? Because anything that you're saying is not going to happen in, in until. Order, in until... order for me to be self-aware, I have to understand that I live in a nation of 330 million people. My personal beliefs. I have to be able to separate that from actual policy. Like I have to I have to be able to separate my, me praying in my faith with actual policy. Act, action with action. I got. I got to meet faith with action, bro. Of course, faith with action. I, I have to. Dead, yeah. Yeah. So I'm talking about policy. I pray. I love God. I love Jesus. Thank you so much. I got to do this work. I got to do this work. 
to, to, to save America? To, to love my brother. There's one commandment, bro. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. The second commandment is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself, bro. I'm, to live your faith, to do what God told you to do. I'm not going to go dive in into some some ancient scripture. I'm going to do this. The, the number one commandment, love my God. Number two, love my brother. I love my God, and therefore I'm going to stand for my brother. What's up, man? I'm fighting for the Lord right now. Well, you said <laughs> the, 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 the ancient scripture is to love your brother, right? Right. So you just dived into it. I'm saying that's what I'm doing. I'm loving right. my brother. That's my point. But the, would you say the I'm, ancient I scripture? Said, I said the first greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and, and soul and mind. And where do you find this at? Bro, in the Bible. Okay. What? Thank you. Thank you. So, so if you're going, if you're going to find some stuff in the Bible, let's go all the way into it, so you can understand. Oh, this is why okay, this shit is so not if happening. Okay. So if you want to, do, you know if you want to I mean? do that, right? Then go. It says if if you're be a good slave. If you're a slave in America, and you're making less than minimum. If, like if you're making less than minimum wage, because there are people in America who make two dollars and fourteen cents an hour. Enjoy that money. Do not make enough money to eat. Do not make enough money to survive. Just do it. Don't fight back. God said so. The, the, the scriptures say. Obey the, le the the laws of the land. And so when the laws of the land are oppressing you for, for 250, 300 years, the law said that I was a slave in America. So you Eman think Emancipation this Proclamation changed that. Right now, the laws of the land say that the American male is a slave with no reproductive rights. And I'm saying that through rhetoric and through political action, we can change that. I don't have to ask God to do that. I can do that. God gave me the power to do that. He gave me hands. He gave me a brain. He gave me a mouth to speak. He gave me the ability to be of action and of service. Right. But my thing is, what about the other prophecies? That's going to change this eventually because it's not, it's not being changed right now. So some other shit got to happen for it to change. You know you, what I mean? I have to hold myself accountable to do the work for the thing to change. That's it. I have to <laughs> believe in myself and my God and do the work. I'm right. not waiting. I'm not waiting on prophecy. I'm not waiting on nothing. You, you don't have no other choice but to wait on prophecy. Yes, prophecy. I do. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I can make this video. This video is going to get hundreds to thousands of views. Yes. And everyone's going to say, so I'm so like, thankful. He's having... <laughs> I'm so thankful for having this conversation because I want to fight back against an oppressive system. And the only way that I can do it is peacefully with a purpose. Okay. Because so, if so, I so. don't, America has nuclear weapons. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, exa that's, that's, hey, that's the change that's going to have to happen. And 14 other industrialized nations have nuclear weapons. Yes, that's the change that's going to have to happen. I mean, whether we like it or not. You so no like matter where I go, the, the, the people in power are going to ask me, do you have a problem? <laughs> and if you do, I will blow you up and send you back to where you came from in a casket. Thank you. Well, well, what's the point of World War Three then? You think that's going to happen? There, no, it's not going to. World War Three is not oh, going to happen. Got, you got something right here. World War Three is not going to happen. Okay, it, it fell. No, it World is going to happen. happen. I mean, World War One and Two did. Sure. It always had to be a trilogy. It's a trilogy to every movie. Stop watching. Hey, Hollywood. <laughs> this is the impact of Hollywood on the American people. <laughs> hey, it is though. It is. If, but no, seriously. If World Holly, War III if Hollywood, is if Hollywood had a part in this, that'd be a part six. Look out for uh, John Wick Part no, Six. I mean, that's it's, that's funny. It's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Indiana, but, uh... <laughs> Indiana Jones Part Twenty Seven. Seriously though, I think they have like when it comes to uh, the shoe industry, they have uh, the Jordan Thirty Twos. He ain't played in twenty years. <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's light stuff. That's light stuff. No, we talking about heavy. I'm just we saying talking about some world like, changing stuff. So so world changing things are to uh, speak into existence that we're not going to go to World War Three. American men are going to set the template on how to stand up against oppression, and then all the other nations are going to follow suit. You're going to have a wave of masculinity throughout all of the nations, and all of a sudden we're going to restore balance across the world. We have beautiful families, and it's going to be like the most peaceful utopic time in the history of the world. And guess who's going to be on top though? We going to be on top. We're going to be on top. The so-called Negro man. <laughs> hey, all I'm here to do. Uh, he's is... laughing, but I'm, I'm, I'm like the Negro man. The... Because yes, you're, you're, entitled, we're gonna be you're on entitled top. to your position. 
And I'm here to make sure that we have the most prosperous nation that ever exists in the history of the world. Well, you're talking about this, this, chunk, this, this chunk of land right here. Yeah, yeah, my three sons live here. My future baby lives here, right here, United States of America. Oh, that, you know? I mean, I understand that. I understand yeah, I'm, that. I'm, I'm here to protect. I'm here to protect uh, my family and my lineage. That's, but remember, it's something bigger than that. Hey, and and when that day comes, we'll deal with that then. Until now, until now, it's time to get busy, baby. It's how they get busy. Mean, we survive every day. You got to survive every day. I thrive every day. I, li- I live in a place of absolute beauty. I-, I wake up and I go and see the sun and talk to God. And at that place, God gives me my purpose. And I say, man, it's time to go to work. And I come and I do my editing. I make my phone calls, do my Definitely. networking, you know what I'm saying? Plan, plot, and strategize because the revolution will be televised right here on your smartphone and on ABC, MTV. It's coming. To a channel near you, brought to you by the greatest American alive. There you go. <laughs> hey, like, subscribe, share all that. Man, Definitely. Thank you. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.